Uh, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, uh, wherever we may be. I thank God for the privilege and the grace to uh, share my testimony and then also share my own uh, personal uh, learning from the spiritual battle in the work of the ministry. Uh, so I really thank God and I believe that by God's grace, you may be blessed through my testimony. Um, I am a shepherd serving medical student camp in, uh, in Lagos campus. Uh, and by the grace of God, I'm serving with my wife and then a co-worker, a family, Shepherd Mingas family. Uh, the key verse for my testimony is 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 4 to 5. So the weapon we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments, every retention, pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. My life testimony. I thank God who saved a wretched sinner like me and made me his loving and joyful shepherd for his flock of sheep. I am the fourth son of seven siblings. We became six when my sister died in 2002, just nine months after my father passed away. At early age, I was exposed to Islam and Christianity because my grandfather was a Muslim and my mom was a Christian. My father believed in God, but he would not have anything to do with religion. The neighborhood my family lived in was full of immoral and violent people. I don't know why we could not move from the neighborhood. Uh, maybe because my parents don't understand my struggle. Mm -hmm. But my mother ensured that we always stay indoors to study or watch TV. We were also made to attend church every Sunday. In my Sunday school class, I was taught about heaven and hell. We we're told that heaven is for the righteous, while hell is reserved for sinners. Because of my solitude life, I tend to give a lot of thoughts to the teachings that I heard at the Sunday school. The teachings didn't make sense to me at all. I thought, how can God create people who are weak and still condemn them to hell for not being able to obey all his commandments? I knew definitely no one could be righteous enough to make it to heaven. So I thought we were all doomed, including my Sunday school teacher. All I knew from childhood was sin and retribution. I had no concept of forgiveness, or love. I felt trapped in the world without joy. I became a very lonely child, left to his imagination. In my imagination, I could see God only as a tyrant who gave my laws that he was not capable of obeying. I hated God and did not want to have anything to do with God. When I decided to leave God out of my life, my heart became hardened and was dark. I became unforgiving I was full of bitterness and anger. I soon became violent and would inflict wounds on anyone who offended me. Soon, my dark heart became lustful and became filled with many sinful desires. I soon started engaging in pornography. I was suffering in darkness and I was joyless. Satan began to torment my young heart with the terror of death. But it was so amazing that the God that I thought hated me never stopped loving me. At age 13, I had an encounter that changed my life. I don't know if it was a trance or a vision. All I knew then was that it was so real. I saw the image of myself in the mirror asking myself three questions. Who are you? Why are you here on earth? When you die, where will you go? The next thing I saw was that I was sinking into a dark hole and I was so afraid. 
there was also a heavy presence of darkness. I was in total darkness and began to cry for help. Then a light appeared and I saw the image of Jesus on the cross praying, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. God's love came into my heart by the Holy Spirit. That night I cried to God to save me and help me. I asked God for the forgiveness of my sins and pleaded with God to set me free from my darkness. After that night, I felt the spirit of heaviness left me and I began to feel the joy of God. I began to read the Bible every day to fill my heart with the word of God. The joy of God began to fill my heart. I fell in love with the Bible. I also started memorizing Bible passages every day. All my fears were gone. I felt I was dipped into Jesus' blood and washed so clean. God brought me to UBF and gave me a shepherd and a Bible teacher. Though my shepherd's English was poor at the time, the word of God always pierced my heart at every Bible study. Of course, I had struggles with anger and unforgiveness. And sometimes Satan tempted me with lustful desires. But I learned to confess my struggle and my victory through Jesus' blood in my prayers and testimony. The weekly Bible study and testimony writing and sharing helped me to overcome the devil's attack. I began to have early morning prayer for one hour with my shepherd. And my shepherd also told me to read 10 chapters of the Bible every day. The more I read the Bible, the more my heart became filled with joy. Then one day, I was moved by the word of God from Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, which says, For we are God's, for we are God's and the world created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. It was clear to me that my purpose was to do God's work. I received God's mission for campus ministry and God helped me to establish a spiritual house church with a beautiful woman of faith. Just immediately after our marriage, my shepherd asked me to pray about pioneering the medical college of the University of Lagos. Without knowing what lies ahead, I just said, yes, I will go. And my coworker did not hesitate either. I knew it was the love of God that was moving our hearts to do the work of God. Part two, spiritual condition of Nigeria and the Baptist. Nigeria is a very religious country with estimates of 49% Christians, which is almost half of the population, predominantly in the South and 50% Muslim, mostly in the northern part of the country. And then we have less than 1% practice, uh, practices traditional religions. Up in the north and the Middle Belt, the persecution and killing of Christians by the Muslim fundamentalists are on the rise and they are growing more violent. Christians are being adopted right in the church and killed. However, in the middle of the persecution, the church and mission work continues to grow in the north and the middle belt of Nigeria. This was because of the sacrifices and prayer of many believers. Many Christians, many Christian families in the north have became, become homeless. Yet, they continue to witness Jesus to their Muslim neighbors. When you hear Nigeria pray loud and wish so much aggression, you may understand the raging battle going on against the evil forces, against the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. There is also a, sub, a suspicion of sub to jihad going on with the movement of the Muslim fundamentalists towards the south. The church continued to battle against this in prayer, and the church continued to hold prayer war marches around the country to pray against the killings. Also, there seems to be this interest in the gospel among the, the Gen Z generations, 
Their hearts are focused on getting rich quickly. They want to live a life of fun and pleasure. To them, the Christian life is boring and restricted. It demands a high level of discipline that hinders them from living a fun filled life. There is also a get rich quick syndrome driving many youths and even teenagers to morning rituals where they have to kill others to make money. Family values and structure seems to have collapsed as most parents are in pursuit of survival rather than raising their children with good values. The economic situation of the country is also getting worse and the insecurity is at its highest level in the history of the nation. Satan is using the situation to destroy families and enslave many young people. To raise one Bible student seemed impossible in this difficult situation, but the word of God continued to spread and many territories have been conquered through the dedicated prayers of Christians in Nigeria. For instance, why a lot of youths, <clears throat> excuse me, why a lot of youths <clears throat> were protesting police brutality in 2020, a group of Christian youths gathered at different spots across Nigeria, praying with tears for the healing of the nation. This gives us hope that God has many spiritual generals, even among the youths, fighting on their knees for the liberation of the country, for the, for the liberation of the country from the grip of darkness and for God to reign over Nigeria. Part three, the battles for souls of the students, spiritual warfare for disciple making ministry in Nigeria. Pioneering the medical campus seemed like it was going to be an impossible task from the beginning. First, neither I nor my wife is a doctor. So we had challenges inviting many medical students for Bible study. The first question they will ask us when we approach them to invite them for Bible study is, are you a student or a doctor? So they become cold to us when we tell them that I am a chemist and my wife is a lawyer. Then they give us a lot of excuses that they are very busy. And I personally used to feel very embarrassed every time we get this code response. So my wife and I, and our two co-workers, Shepard Benga and Shepard Eschiaka, decided to hold fasting and prayer, prayer walks around the campus for three days. And we repeated this once every week. We prayed against every Satan strongholds in the heart of the students. And we commanded them by the power of the Holy Spirit to listen to us and accept our Bible invitation. During this prayer, God's word rebooked me personally from Matthew chapter 28, verse 18, to understand that our authority is from Jesus, not from a career. So the, the passage helped me to overcome my fear and to go and speak to the students with Jesus' authority. So we started responding to the students' question differently about who we are. We tell them that we are shepherds teaching the Bible to campus students. And amazingly, they started listening to us. Then our next prayer was for a place to rent as a Bible house. We prayed for over four years without giving up. During this period, we, during this period, we have Bible study with students in their hostels or the meeting rooms at the hostels. God opened the door for us also to have a room for weekly Bible academy while we waited for God's answer for a Bible center. We use the open field for prayer meetings. We raise our voice loud to pray to God, to open the heart of the students to the word of God. Soon, we started having over 10 students for Bible studies, and some of them follow us about six kilometers to the main Bible house for Sunday worship service. We were filled with joy that God is working mightily on the Medela campus. God also gave us one faithful brother among the students. He was a good master fisher of men. He was good at dragging his classmates to Bible studies 
and for prayer meetings. In 2010, God answered our prayer for a Bible center. We could hold our Sunday worship service in the living room of a two bedroom apartment we rented. This was by God's grace because no house owner wants to allow the use of their residential apartments for church programs. Four brothers also by the grace of God came to live common life in the Bible center. We had early morning prayer and took daily breaths every day. My wife and I had to work to support our family and the Bible center renters. So it was difficult for us to combine work, ministry, children care, and also supporting our extended families. This affected my wife's health a lot. And because I was not a caring man, I hurt my wife a lot. Satan began to attack our family. Then after three years at the Bible Center, the house owner asked us to pack out without any cost. This was a difficult time for the ministry and for my family. Satan began to use this opportunity to attack my faith in God. I became very exhausted, but my shepherd and shepherdess never stopped praying for us. During one of my, during one of my Bible study, but my Bible reading, I came across the word of God from 1 John chapter 3, verse 8b, which says, the reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the work of the devil. I believe these words personally and literally, and we decided to go into prayer and fasting for God's provision of funds and a suitable place that we can have as a Bible house to serve the precious brothers and sisters that God has given us. The first miracle that God gave us was that God blessed me to get a better paying job that gives me more time for ministry and family. We also got a duplex for the Bible Center, for Bible Center and for my family and Shepardestiaka to stay. We also had two extra rooms at the back of the house for sister tents. We are also able to rent a two bedroom apartment within the same compound as brother's tents. God's grace was so amazing. Indeed, we saw the power of Jesus destroying the work of the devil against the work of God. God also restored my wife's health. Indeed, Jesus destroyed the work of Satan and gave us victory. The brothers also began to grow through one-to-one -one Bible study and daily bread. We also challenged ourselves to read the Bible, the whole Bible, every year. I also saw the power of God at work when we submitted ourselves to God to obey his word and serve his flock of sheep faithfully. We also never stopped raising an altar of prayer every morning, praying for each Bible student one by one. I also experienced the power of God through the life of one of my precious Bible students who was our personal fisher, our powerful fisher of men. He paid his professional exam twice and he was asked to withdraw from the program. He was so devastated and also stop fishing. He also he was stopped fishing and also stopped attending Bible study. His mindset was that was that he was being tormented by the devil and enemies from his household because he will be the first medical doctor in his family. So I visited I visited him every week to pray with him, and I also asked him to read the New Testament again and again. I challenge him to write the entrances down for medicine again. And by the grace of God, he was admitted into another medical school in Lagos. When he got to the fourth year, writing his professional exam, he failed again. At this time, he was much afraid again because he thought he was going to get expelled from the school. I realized that he was crippled by his inner fear. So I gave him God's word and Jesus' word from Mark chapter 11, verse 22. And I asked him to confess this word again. Have faith in God. By God's grace, he passed the exam. He's now in his final year and he's studying the Bible with over eight students. We join. He's full of the Holy Spirit to serve faithfully. 
is preparing as a, Bible, a messenger for our Bible conference in April. So I pray by the grace of God, it will continue to grow in the knowledge of God and the word of God. Part four, what I learned personally about spiritual warfare. Number one, Spiritual warfare starts with my submission to God. James chapter 4, verse 7 says, Submit yourself then to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Without submitting to God in obedience, I cannot operate with his authority to resist the devil. I have learned to submit to God in my prayer every day and by faith. Submission also means my daily humble repentance before God so that the devil will not have a legal ground or a foothold in my life. Two, spiritual warfare must be done standing on Jesus' authority and the victory he has won. Only the name of Jesus is the authority by which all powers and authority bow. We can see this from Philippians chapter 2, verse 9 to 11. Our Bible teaching also must be with Jesus' authority. For Matthew chapter 7, verse 28 says that Jesus taught as one who had authority and not as the teachers of the law. When we teach the Bible by Jesus' authority, the power of God's word liberates people from Satan's bondage and give them hope and deliverance. Number three, the battle is not against the Bible students. It is against the prince of this world. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 to 2 says that it is Satan who is the ruler of the, of the kingdom of the air that is at work in the heart of those who are disobedient. I once lived under the same power of darkness, but Jesus set me free to live for the glory of God. Therefore, right, rather than fighting our Bible students, we should fight in prayer and faithfully teach them the Bible one-on-one. -on -one. Number four, spiritual warfare is a daily and continuous battle. We must not think that when we win one battle, the devil will relent, but the Satan will come again and again to fight against us, fight against our family and our Bible students. So teaching people to obey Jesus' teaching is a constant spiritual battle. And that is why it gives us its authority according to Matthew chapter 8, verse 18. He said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given unto me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I am with you to the very end of the age. This is why we must also put on the full armor of God every day, according to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 18. May God bless you and I to have victories every day through the authority of Jesus to raise many great disciples of Jesus in our campus evangelistic ministry in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.